Good day, grade tens. Welcome to this next lesson in trigonometry. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with what we were doing in the last lesson, which was on Monday. Um, we were doing some trigonometry. I would like to welcome you if this is your first lesson, and I'd like to urge you to join our to enable grade ten maths class. If you do that, you can message me, and then you can ask me questions, and you could also request sections be covered or um, certain questions in exams that you need help help with etc etc um not a big deal if you don't want to join and you don't actually have to even um communicate with me at all and it can be totally anonymous okay it's not like school i'm not going to be picking on you and asking you if you did your homework or not okay so let's get started with the trigonometry so last lesson we were talking about special angles and i got as far as teaching the 60 degree special angle and because the 60 degree is the basis for the 30 degree which we're about to go on to I decided to go back and repeat the explanation for the 60 degree and then we'll do 30 degrees etc etc and then we're going to use it okay so here we go what happened was that they took an equilateral triangle equilateral triangle is a triangle with all the sides equal and they let the sides be two units long so all the sides are two units long What's also special about an equilateral triangle is that all the angles are equal. They're all 60 degrees because if you think about it, you've got 180 degrees in a triangle and you've got three angles that are all equal. You can divide by three and you end up with 60 degrees. So this angle is 60 degrees, this angle is 60 degrees, and this angle is 60 degrees. Um, so now what's happened is the next thing that they did was they dropped a perpendicular, okay, a perpendicular, and it's a perpendicular bisector. What does that mean? It means that it's perpendicular to 90 degrees to this line, and it bisects this side, and it bisects this angle. So this angle now is now 30 degrees. Okay, and this is 90 degrees, but it works both ways. So this side, on this side, it's also 30 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. So now we can look at that triangle, which is this half, this right-hand side half of the triangle. So this is 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is 90 degrees. So then we also said that this side was two, but when we dropped a perpendicular bisector down, it split this side into two equal bits, okay? So this is going to be one unit and this is one unit. So therefore, this length here is one unit. So I'm going to call this A, B, C just to help you understand it a bit better. So B, C is one unit. Now we need to get the length of A, B. But this is a right angle triangle, so do you agree that I can use Pythagoras? And Pythagoras stated that the hypotenuse squared equaled the sum of the square of the other side. So it would be x squared plus y squared, okay? Or in this case, it would be ac squared is equal to bc squared plus ab squared. Okay, and we're trying to find AB. Okay, so do you agree that we can say therefore that AC squared minus BC squared is equal to AB squared? Okay, and then to get the AB, we can square root both sides. We can square root both sides. So therefore, AB in this case is going to be the square root, AC is 2. So it's 2 squared minus BC is 1, so it's 1 squared, which is then equal to the square root of 2 squared is 4 minus 1, which is the square root of 3. So therefore, this is the square root of 3. There you go. So that's how we get the 60, 30, 90 degree triangle and grade 
tens, I really would urge you that at the beginning of your exam paper, obviously not during reading time, you generally get a reading time of 10 minutes at the beginning of each final, each exam. During the tests, I don't think your teachers generally give you reading time, but the minute you're allowed to write and your test or your exam has got trigonometry in, I would really suggest you write a couple of things. The first thing I want you to write is Sakatoa or silly old hens, cackle and howl till old age or whatever. And then I want you to draw your special triangles, okay? The reason for that is because sometimes it gets a little bit confusing in exams when you're halfway through an exam paper and you're suddenly feeling a bit stressed because you've got 10 minutes left and you have to finish the whole exam paper and you haven't got the time or you think you don't. So if you draw this straight away and it's nice and fresh in your memory, then chances are you are going to be able to remember it. So the reason that we have the special triangle is because then we have special ratios, okay? And remember what I said to you in the last lesson, I said that we were talking about similarity and the fact that the reason we had to show you about, so talk about similarity is the fact that it doesn't matter whether this line here is X, okay, the ratio of this to this, if this angle is 60 degrees, is always going to be the same. The ratio of these sides is always the same with respect to these angles using the trigonometric, trigonometric functions. So in other words, we can say that sine theta is always going to give us the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. So if I've got sine of 60 degrees, the ratio of the sides is always going to be enough that we're using this angle here, 60 degrees. Do you agree that this side here is the opposite side because it's opposite my 60 degrees. This is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degrees and the BC is the adjacent side, okay? So the opposite is root three over the hypotenuse, which is two. So therefore, if I see an angle of 60 degrees in a right angle triangle, the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse is always going to be root three over two. It doesn't matter if it's bigger than that, it could be something like 6 root 3 over, if I times that by 6, I have to, over 12, okay? Uh, let me just make that neater. Sorry, uh, my little pad is having a nervous breakdown. 12, okay? Because if I took out a common factor, I could divide both the top and the bottom by 6, I'd end up with root 3 over 2. The ratio of the sides, okay? will always be root three over two if I've got a sine of 60 degrees. If I've got cos of 60 degrees, the ratio is always going to be cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be one over two, okay? And tan of 60 degrees is always going to be, always going to be opposite over adjacent, which is going to be root three, over one, which is root three. Okay, so eventually you'll get to a point where, where you see cos six, you're gonna, in your head, you immediately be going, oh, half, okay? But at the moment, I would seriously suggest you draw your triangles because it is much easier when you've got your triangles. Okay, so now we can apply exactly the same information and rules to 30 degrees. So the triangle again looks like this, and this is 30 degrees, and this is 60 degrees, and this is 2, 1, and root 3. Now, you may have wondered why I showed you this. And the reason I showed you that is because a lot of my students complained that they couldn't remember where the 2 and the 1 sat, okay, and the root 3 sat. They couldn't remember. They knew that the longest one was the 2, but then they couldn't work out where these were. Okay, but if you understand that it comes from an equilateral triangle that was 60, 60, 60, which has been broken up into a half, et cetera, et cetera, so you see how they drew it, then it's very obvious that this is a 60 degrees. This line here is the hypotenuse, which is the original length, which is 2. Here is where we drop the perpendicular down. So we split this length, which was 2, it's now 1. And therefore, we got the root 3 there for using Pythagoras. So now if we talk about Sokotoa here, Sokotoa, 
Okay, we've got sine of 30 degrees. So now I'm looking at the 30 degrees, the 30 degrees, this one. Okay, so do you with respect to the 30 degrees, the one is the opposite side. The 60 degrees, that I means sorry, the root three is the adjacent side, and this remains the hypotenuse. Now, I know that some of you might have been taught something along the lines of this, and you were given that this is X and this is Y and this is R, and then you were taught that sine theta is Y over R, cos theta is X over R, and tan theta is going to be opposite adjacent y over x okay that's cool i have no problem with that the problem the, the, the reason i don't teach this is because you're going to get questions let me just show you we'll go back that look like this now where's x and y is y and where's r Okay, it is very difficult when your triangle looks like that to decide which is the y axis, which is the x axis, and which is the r, okay, the radius. However, it's very obvious that you can work out where the hypotenuse is, where the adjacent side is, and which is the opposite side. So that's why I don't tend to teach the y's and r's and x's and r's, okay? But if your teacher's taught you this and you understand it, awesome use y r x r y x it's fine no big deal but i'm not going to be teaching it okay so sine 30 let's go back sine of 30 is why well, am i okay is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse in this case the opposite is one and the hypotenuse is two so sine of 30 is a half okay cos of 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root three over two, and tan of 30 degrees, oh, sorry, tan of 30 degrees equals opposite over adjacent, which is one over root three, one over root three. Okay, and then we've got a special triangle, another one. Okay, so there's only two special triangles that you need to worry about, and this is the second one. Yeah, we've got an isosceles triangle, okay? This is 90 degrees, this is 45 degrees, this is 45 degrees, and this is given the length one, and that is given the length one. So then you can work out the hypotenuse because the hypotenuse is going to be, and this time we're just gonna call this X and this Y just to make it easier. So the hypotenuse is the square root of X squared plus Y squared which is the square root of one squared plus one squared, which is the square root of two. So therefore this is the square root of two. Okay, and that's the second triangle that you're gonna draw. Now grade tens, I know that square roots have traditionally plus or minus the square root of two. That's actually the answer, right? I know that. But you, we're working out length now. We can't have a negative length. So we ignore that answer. It doesn't make sense, okay? So we're looking at the square root of two. So now we can again go sakatoa. Okay. So sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. And now, admittedly, I've got two 45 degree angles. It makes no difference which one I'm using. So I'm going to choose the bottom one. So therefore, this is going to be my opposite side because it's opposite it. This is opposite the 90 degrees. So therefore, that is the hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, and then this will obviously be the one next to it, so it's the adjacent side. Okay, so sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be 1 over root 2. And sorry, that's going to be sine of 45 degrees. Sorry, is 1 over root 2. Cos of 45 degrees is going to be adjacent of hypotenuse, which is 1 over root 2. And tan of 45 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, which is 1 divided by 1, which equals 1. Now, when we do our graphs, our trigonometric, trigonometric graphs, we'll talk some more about these special angles and how they relate. Okay, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. So now it says, and grade 10s, 
the question will say without the use of a calculator determine and they mean without the use of a calculator yes you can substitute this into your calculator and you guys have got cool calculators that show fractions so chances are that you'll get an answer that looks like you did it by yourself but there's method marks so if you don't show your working you're not going to get those marks okay so the whole point is that you have to do this without the use of a calculator and where you see without the use of a calculator you need know that you immediately have to do two things you need to do actually three you have to do your 60 30 2 1 root 3 and you have to do what happened to my pen there it is okay you have to do 45 45 1 1 root 2 and you have to write Sokotoa okay now that you've done all that you're set now as I'm going through these questions on each slide I'm going to redraw this and you're going to probably get bored but the point is that every time you guys do trig you need to write it out because every time you write it out you have you're memorizing it you're getting it into your head so that it will be you won't even have to think about where the two and where the root three is okay it'll just be second nature to you okay so now let's do this tan of 45 tan is opposite over adjacent so let's choose a 45 and i'm going to again choose the bottom one so then this is going to be my opposite side this is going to be my adjacent side and this is going to be my hypotenuse right so tan of 45 is opposite over adjacent so that's one over one minus sine of 30 so we're looking at 30 degrees so this is my opposite this is my adjacent and this is my hypotenuse right so the sine is opposite over hypotenuse so it's one over two which is just going to be a half and no you don't have to write it as one over one i'm just writing it as one over one so you guys get to see what i'm doing obviously one divided by one is just one okay so there's your answer see how nice and easy that is now let's do this one Again, without the use of a calculator, so I'm going to write so katoa, and I'm going to do my two triangles. I know there are no marks here for neatness. Obviously, you want to be able to read it. And ideally, you'd like your teacher to be able to read it so that they can see where you get getting your numbers from. So that's 30, 60, to one root three right so we this time we've got four tan 30 minus one so what is this saying this is saying four times whatever that equals minus one so let's go look at tan 30 so 30 is my second triangle so i really didn't have to draw both so this is 30 degrees okay and tan is going to be opposite over adjacent so i first have to identify my opposite and my adjacent do you agree that this is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side so tan of is going to be opposite over adjacent that's one over root three okay that's four times one over root three minus one so you could leave this as four over root three minus one but it is much neater if you bring it over a common denominator of root three and you go root three into root three is one one times four is four minus remember there's an implied one year one divided into root three is root three minus so it becomes root three okay and there's your pretty answer okay now we're looking at solving triangles okay so yeah we are given an angle an angle of 26 degrees we are given 30 centimeters and we are asked to find x okay so let's think about that we've got a right angle triangle so we can use Sokotoa okay we've got the angle so this side is our adjacent side and this is our 
opposite side. So we've got opposite over adjacent. So we're using opposite and adjacent. The way I always do this, and yes, this is quite a simple example, so it might seem silly to be doing all of this in this example, but let's go through it. The up, we want the opposite, so let's tick. That's opposite and that's opposite. We've got the adjacent, so that's opposite. Got that, got that. Do you see the tan is the trig function, the trig ratio, that it has got both sides that we want and need, okay? So therefore, I'm going to use tan. So I'm going to go tan of 26 degrees equals the opposite side, which is x, over the adjacent side, which is 30. Then what do we do? We times both sides by 30 to get rid of the 30. Okay, so therefore we've got x is equal to 30 tan 26 degrees. And then we get out our calculator. And at this point, grade 10, you should know that I'm going to say what? I'm going to say you need to make sure that it doesn't matter if you've got a sharp calculator, whether you've got a Casio calculator, you need to make sure that it's in degrees. Okay, and most importantly, it shouldn't have a capital R there because that would stand for radians. So always make sure. Now, some of the calculators have got a little button at the back. It's a reset button. If you're not sure, just press the reset button. Otherwise, you can have to go into your mode and set up, and every calculator is different. So you know what? Go Google that. There is a there's a there is a manual that you can download if you need to. Okay, or ask a teacher. Okay, so 30 turn 26. So we're going to go 30 times tan of 26 close bracket equals so that's 14.63 so therefore x equals 14 comma 63 and i just want to go back to that answer guys we're rounding off to two decimal places you need to check the instructions at the beginning of your test to see if your teacher wants to round you off to one decimal place or two decimal places if the teacher doesn't tell you if the exam doesn't tell you then always round off to two decimal places okay then the way to do this is in order to round up to two decimal places, we look at the third decimal. That's the third number behind the comma or the full stop. So we look at this one and you can see that this is smaller than five, which means we're going to leave the three as it is. We're rounding down as it is. So it becomes 14 comma 63. There we go. Okay, now let's look at this example. This time we need to find the angle. Okay, we've got X. So you'll notice again, we've got a right angle triangle. So we're going to be using Sarkatoa. Okay. And again, if this is our angle X, do you agree that that's the opposite side? And this is the adjacent side. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to tick off what I've got. I've got the opposite side. I've got the adjacent side. The only trig ratio that's got both is tan. So I can say tan of x is equal to the opposite, which is 90, over 30. So do you agree that tan of x is equal to 3? So now to get x, we're actually going to go x is equal to second function of 3. Okay. So if you look on your calculator, there should be a little shift above the tan, there will be a tan to the minus one. That's actually arctan. It stands for arctan. But what you're going to do is you're going to shift tan three, close bracket, equals. So it becomes 71.57. So x equals 71,57 degrees. Okay, so that's how we would use this in a triangle. Now let's look at some slightly more complicated examples. So, yeah, we've got a triangle where we've got A, B, C, and D. Okay, A, B, C, and D. Here is a right angle here, which means do you agree that this is a right angle? So both of those angles are right angles. They want the length of AC. Okay, so I like to 
let's highlight it let's highlight it so let's highlight it i like to highlight what i need to get okay and then let's talk about what we have and what we need we have let's just change the pen okay and go back to the blue okay do you agree that we've got this length here we've got that angle here and we've got that angle here hmm so if we just look at triangle a b d let's just look at that triangle first do you agree that in triangle a b d in triangle a b d if we look at that triangle we can say that okay b if we look at this angle 48 degrees do you agree this would be the opposite side this would be the hypotenuse and AB would be the adjacent side, okay? And do you agree that if I look at this triangle, BCD, I'll go back to my writing in a second, I'm just busy thinking out loud. Do you agree that that's the opposite side, this is the hypotenuse and this is the adjacent, okay? And do you agree that the sum of these two would equal my AC? So if I can use my blue triangle to get AB and my red triangle to get BC and then I could add the two together, then do you agree that I would be able to get AC? Okay, so let's do that. So let's go back to this blue and we're saying in triangle ABD, okay, we're looking at Sokotoa and we want to know, can we get the adjacent? So we want, oopsie, sorry. Let me just correct that. We want the adjacent, okay? And what do we have? We've got the opposite. So I'm going to use tan, okay? So we're going to say, we're going to say tan of 48 degrees equals the opposite side, which is 35 meters over the adjacent side, which is AB, okay? Therefore, if we times both of these sides by AB, I get that AB tan of 48 degrees is equal to 35, okay? But I'm not solving for this, I'm solving for AB. So what I have to do, I have to divide both of these sides by tan of 48. So therefore we can cancel these two and we have that AB is equal to 35 over tan of 48. Okay, and now we can put that in our calculator. So let's get, get our calculator out and clear it and we can use our fraction button, why not? It goes 35 all over tan of 48 and we close the bracket and we say equals and that's 31.5 and I'm going to round up to two decimal places so it's 31 comma 51 31 comma 51 so it's 31 comma 51 units okay so that's a b now we need to work out b c so we're going to change to red so you can see what I'm doing so now we're working in the red triangle. So we're going in the triangle BCD, BCD, okay? Do you agree, again, we've got the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side. We've got the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side. So again, we're gonna use tan. So we're gonna go tan of 42 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 35, over the adjacent, which is BC. So I went a really long way around to show you how to get this, but you can also think of it as cross multiplying because this is over one, okay? There's an implied over one. So do you agree we could just cross multiply? So we could say BC over one is equal to 35 over 10 of 42 degrees. Now grade tens, if you find that a little bit complicated for you and you struggle to get that right, there's no harm in doing it slowly, okay? I'm just worried because I don't know who my audience is that you might be finding this a bit slow, which is why I'm showing you both options, okay? But if you get this wrong, rather do step by step, it's more important to get it right, okay? So let's do this in our calculator. So now we've got 
35 divided by, and this time I'm not using my fraction button, in case you guys don't have a fraction button. So then it becomes 10 of 42, and I'm gonna close my bracket twice because I've opened one there, and I get 38.87. So I get 38,87. So now this length here, BC, is 38,AC. I mean, 8.7. So do you agree that I can say, therefore, that AC equals 31,51 plus 38,87, which is 8, 8 and 5 is 13 carry 1, that's 9, 10 carry 1. That's 70,38 units long. There we go. Okay. Now let's try a different example. It says calculate the length of BC. So I showed you this example a little bit earlier because I wanted you guys to see that sometimes your triangles aren't on the beautiful axes that they're used to seeing. So, sorry. Um, for some reason, the highlight in this program doesn't change when you're trying to highlight down. So you have to kind of squiggle it so you can see where you're highlighting. Okay, right. So we want BC. So the point is what I was saying was that it, because we're using Sokotoa, so we're using opposite and apart and use and adjacent, it doesn't matter what angle our triangles are at, we can still work out our Sokotoa. Okay, so I'm going to write Sokotoa up here. Okay, right, now, now, we need BC. Okay, so do you agree that in order to work out BC, we need something other than just the 20 degree so what we need to do is get information from that triangle, this ADC triangle. But the ADC triangle has only two angles, it's got no length. But do you agree that I could use this 14 degrees and this 70 millimeters, and I could use that to get this side here? Okay. And then once I've got that side, once I've got the AD, I've got AD and this 36 degrees there, and I could use that to work out the AC. And then once I've got AC and the 20 degrees, I can work out CB. Okay, so let's do that. So the first triangle we're going to be looking at, we colored in red. So we get in the yeah, so we're going to be using in triangle AED, AED, the 14 degrees is given, so we need, and this is 90 degrees, hey, if this material is 90 degrees and that's the straight line, then obviously EDA is 90 degrees as well. So this side here is going to be my opposite side, this is my hypotenuse, and this is going to be my adjacent side, my adjacent to my 14 degrees. Okay, so in the red triangle, we have got the hypotenuse. We've got the hypotenuse. We want the adjacent side. So we're going to use cos. So we can say cos of 14 degrees equals the adjacent side, which is AD, over the hypotenuse, which is 70. Okay, so do you agree we can multiply both sides by 70? That cancels with that, and we end up with 70 cos 14 degrees is equal to AD, and we can get out our calculators, and we can go 70 cos 14, close the bracket, equals and it becomes 67.92. And remember, you're always running off to two decimal places at the moment. So it's 67.92. 67,92 equals your AD. So that is 67,92. Now we're looking at the next triangle. So now we're looking at inner triangle ADC. ADC. Do you agree that with this 36 degrees, this side is the adjacent side, right? Because it's next to it. 
This is the opposite side and this purple line is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the 90 degrees over here. So therefore we can say, well, in that case, we've got the adjacent side. Okay. We want the hypotenuse. So again, we're using cos. So we're going to say cos of 36 degrees. Oh, sorry. 36 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is 67,92 over the hypotenuse, which in this case is AC. Okay. So we're using the same ratio, but the last time we were working out the adjacent and this time we're working out the hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it slowly again just to make sure you guys understand how to get to it. So I'm going to times both this side by AC and that side by AC because what you do to the one side, you do to the other. So you cross those out. So this becomes AC cos 36 degrees equals 67,92, but now I'm solving for AC, so I divide both sides by cos of 36 degrees. This cancels with this, so you get AC is equal to 67,92 over cos of 36 degrees. And then we need our calculator again. And I'm going to go 67.92 all over cos of 36. And that becomes 83.95. 83.95. So therefore, AC is 83,95. Let me just write it here as well. Equals 83,95. Right, and now we're finally in our last triangle. So let's go to purple. So in triangle ABC, okay, we've got the hypotenuse. Okay, this is the hypotenuse. This is the opposite side. And this here is the adjacent side of the 20 degrees. We want the opposite, okay. And we've got the hypotenuse, so we have to use sine. So we're going to go sine of 20 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is BC, over the hypotenuse, which is 83,95. So obviously then we have to multiply both sides by 83,95. So this cancels with this, and this is BC equals, and then we're going to get out our calculator. And I'm going to write it in again, because if I don't, I'm going to, because I've written 83.95, I've rounded already. So if I don't use that rounded thing, I'm going to get a funny answer. So we have to use the same with what we've already written. So it's 83.95 times sine of 20 degrees, close bracket, equals, and that becomes 28.71, becomes 28,71 units. So the final answer is 28,71, and actually the units are millimeters, because they tell us over there that's millimeters. Sure, okay, so you can see that we're basically using the same type of thing over and over again. We're using our soccer toe, but we're using different ways to be using it in different ways. Now, grade 10, if you are watching this video live and you are struggling to understand this or would like to try it again by yourselves, you are welcome to go and watch a recording of this. So when this is finished, any time in the future, you come back to exactly the same way that you got here in the first place, exactly, press exactly the same buttons, and you get to, you'll get to recording. And then what I'd urge you to do is, I would suggest that you get to the point where there's this question, okay, when it comes up. In other words, it'll look like this. I'm going to let me show you. It'll look like this. Gone. Okay. It looked like that. And then I would say, try it. Try it for yourself. And then once you've tried it, then 
watch and see if you got it right or wrong. The reason I say that is because some, it's so easy to sit and watch a teacher or somebody else do the questions. And as you're doing it, you're going, yeah, 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 okay, I understand, I understand, I understand. But how many of you have not got home at the end of the day and be given homework and then you sit down and what looked so easy in the class when the teacher was doing it now you start it and you haven't a clue as to what was happening and the reason for that is because there's a total different modality in other words you learn differently whether you're watching or doing you learn differently so try it for yourself first and then come through and watch it okay right moving on so now we're going to talk about 2D problems. We kind of already have started 2D problems. We just haven't said they were 2D problems. 2D, two-dimensional. In other words, flat stuff. Not these, like these cool movies at all. We do get to 3D stuff, but not to this year. Okay, so you need to know these expressions. They like using these phrases or these expressions, and they are the angle of elevation and the angle of depression. So we're not talking about mood swings here. We're talking about how we are looking at something. So if you are standing over here and you look up at the top of, for example, a cliff, the angle at which you're looking up at, which makes an angle with the horizontal, which I often says a horizon, is the angle of elevation. So the angle that you look up at is called the angle of elevation. And if you're standing on the cliff, let's say, for example, you're lying on the cliff, okay? You're lying on the cliff and you're peeking down. I don't know why you'd be peeking down, but let's pretend. You're peeking down. If this is the horizon, the angle that you look down at to look at, for example, a boat on the boat on the ocean or something, that is called the angle of depression. Okay, so angle of elevation is the angle you look up at, and angle of depression is the angle you're looking down at. And I just want to point out one more thing about these angles before we get carry on. This is the angle of elevation is with the ground, okay? So it's it makes an angle of theta with the ground, but the ground is horizontal. So that means that if I draw in the horizontal line, yeah, this year will be theta because they're alternate, okay? They're alternate. And therefore, we can say that this is 90 minus theta. Now, we can say that that's 90 minus theta for two reasons. One is that the angles in the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees, right? So if angle A is theta and angle B is 90, then what is C? Okay, so let's work it out. So 180 degrees has to equal angle A plus angle B plus angle C, right? So... In that case, angle A is theta, angle B is 90, and angle C is what we're trying to find out, and that's all equal to 180 degrees. So let's take everything that's not C across. So we've got 180 degrees minus theta minus 90 degrees is equal C. So then we can actually group it. We go 180 minus 90, because they're numbers, minus theta is equal to C. So therefore, we've got 180 minus 90 is 90. So this becomes 90 minus theta is equal to C. So there you go there. The other way you could realize this is that you could say, well, actually, this line here is parallel with this line. We've just said it. Therefore, this has to be a 90 degree angle. If that's theta, that has to be 90 minus theta. And it works exactly the same here. If this is beta, then this has to be beta. Okay. So what are we saying? We're saying that the angle of elevation has to be the same as the angle of depression. Okay. If your ground is, is horizontal. Okay. Right. So let's do an example using this information. So you've got Sipo and he is flying a kite with a string that is 15 meters long. The angle of elevation from Sipo to the kite is 58 degrees. What is the height of the kite? Okay, so I will never win any medals for my drawings. Okay, never, ever, ever. Okay, yes, yeah, Sipo. Okay, and he is flying a kite. Now we're talking old fashioned kite. 
Okay, so it's a diamond shape. And if you guys have ever been made a kite with your parents, your grandparents, you would always have a tail and there would be little bows on your tail. Okay, right. So there's your kite. I don't know why we had to have a tail. Actually, the tail's in the wrong place. But you always had to have a tail on the kite. So, I'm sorry, but I'm going to draw the tail. Right, so now they tell us that the angle of elevation from seaport to the kite is 58 degrees. In other words, the angle this makes with the horizontal is 58 degrees. They also said the string is 15 meters long. And they want to know what is the height of the kite. Now, obviously, this is very literal because obviously Sipo has a little bit of height himself. Okay, and I just realized the time. Okay, so grade tens, what I would like to suggest you do is that you screenshot this, okay, and you try and do it for homework. No, I'm not going to check if you did or didn't. Okay, but this is where we're going to carry on when we next do grade 10 maths, which will be on Monday. So please join me um, on Monday and we'll work out how high Sipo's kite is. Have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.